Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are making this tote. Now you may have seen the video recently where I made the knob and I wanted to turn a knob without actually turning it on a lathe. So we're going to be doing the other half and making the tote today. Now this particular one is interesting because it's got to have that swivel so it can swing side to side like the knob can. And so we have to make a tote without a pattern because I haven't actually been able to find a pattern for a 12 and a quarter. This is going to be a lot of fun. Not to mention it's all out of zebra wood, so it's not original, but man, does that look good. So let's dive in and take a look at making this. On to the tote. And we're going to be doing this out of the same zebra wood that we made the knob out of last week. And for this, we need a smooth surface so that we can attach the pattern, so we're going to scrape that off. If you've ever used a card scraper, it is a fantastic thing to use. Um, but uh, we need to lay out the pattern on here, glue it down, and then make sure that everything is the way we want it to be. One problem I have is I couldn't find a pattern for a 12 and a quarter. So I'm actually using a pattern for a number four, and I'll leave a link to where you can find these patterns down below. But that meant that the screw angle was different, and there were a few other little things on this that were slightly different. But it'll give me a general shape that I can work off of. I'm making it taller than it needs to be and shorter than it needs to be. A lot of people are going to ask about the gold ring. That is a little trick to make sure that your drill bit stays um, horizontal. At this point, it really doesn't matter that much. I just put it on more out of habit, but later on, there will be a couple times where it is invaluable. If your handle goes too low, then it comes towards you. If it goes too high, it goes away from you. And then we can bore out from one side, bore out from the other side, and then have a hole that pops through. And then we use the expanding bit to do the last hole. And this is a nice one as it allows you to do a larger and larger hole. Um, this particular one will go, uh, I believe it's one inch all the way up to inch and a half or two inches, something like that. Uh, and uh, it makes it very nice and, until you uh, do that. Okay, that's one down. Uh, let's do it again. Print off another pattern. Stick it onto another piece of wood. <laughs> oh well. Now, I, I actually ended up doing this um, three times as the next time there was a problem with the drill bit and it drilled the wrong size hole. It actually expanded as it got bigger um, and I apparently just didn't tighten the screw down enough. So this is the third attempt and <laughs> we were getting one out of this. So thankfully I had enough, uh, had enough zebra wood for it. You can see this other scrap on there that is uh, scrap now. So now we have it, uh, we have the holes drilled out, we need to start cutting out the vast majority of the waste. And most of this just can be done with a series of saws cutting from one side to the other. And then because it has a little bit of a zigzag pattern, it's just easy to break it off. And you can do that from one side, do that from the other side, break off a little bit here and a little bit there, and then you will have the piece you're looking for. So it's just staying close to the line. Um, uh, and most of these times I'll be, I'll be sawing really close to the line. Uh, but I won't cross it at any point, and I'll, I'll just get as close as I can with you know, staying away from it. And if I'm if I have to stay away from it a good ways, that's it's not a problem because I can come in with rasps and clean it out. So there's the other side of the handle, and now we have the rough shape of it. And you start to see how this is coming together. It's almost looking like a tote. It just needs a little more work. <laughs> now that we have most of it taken off, we can come and remove a lot of these little chunks that are just, they're, they're big and it's easier to do with a saw. And in this, we're getting even closer to, like to the line. And now it's actually starting to look like a, uh, like a, like a, like a tote. So we're, we're getting really close. The next step is coming in with chisels and taking off the large chunks that uh, just it's faster to do with a chisel than a rasp. And for most of these, the, the rasp is actually really fast. And a lot of people in the last video were like, wow, that's really, really slow. Well, no, in the amount of time it would have taken me to set up a lathe and get it all up, I, I actually was able to cut the knob faster than I would have had, had, had to set up the lathe for it. But uh, in this case, it, it's really not that long. The amount of time I spent on actually shaping the tote was only about uh, 30, 40 minutes. So it, it's, a, it's a fairly quick thing when you, when you have decent rasps that will chop through the wood quickly. I'm going to draw a center line on it, and that lets me know I can round from one side to the center line, and then from the other side to the center line, the two rounded sections should meet at that center line. And so it's, it's just a, a process of going with a heavy rasp and then to a finer rasp and then to a finer file and then to a finer file. And uh, inside curves, I'm actually using a large rat tail like this so I can get tight into the corner here. And just going at it and feeling it occasionally, putting my hand on it. Does this, does this feel good? Where are the bumps that are running into my hand? And I can actually go to town on that. You'll see I have a hand screw clamp that is in the vise. This will raise it up, making it easier to work on, as well as it's a smaller clamp, so it doesn't get in the way of the files. It's also very quick and easy to adjust and move 
and each of the adjustments and positions I'm really only keeping it there for 30 seconds to a minute adjusting moving doing the next section and you can see how this changes the profile really quickly with a, with a rasp and you're going from something that's a simple shape to something that's much much more comfortable this is one of the reasons why you always want to use files and rasps to create a tote and not a router a router will give you a consistent curve all the way along the length of the handle the problem with that is it is not comfortable your hand does not have a consistent curve from one side to the other and so when you use files and rasps you can make that curve progressive and you can make it feel good in the hand and if you've ever felt the difference between a filed tote and a routered tote there is a drastic difference between the two and so it gives you far more freedom and here we're just going to be going through and cleaning up all the marks left by the rasp with a finer file and then we'll come in with a finer file and uh, finish it up in total for this I'm only using four or five files and rasps I just have a few that I like and trust and they, they do the work rather quickly you can start to see how the wood is starting to shine and this is one of the things I love about the the file work is when it shines like that you can see it's got a nice smooth surface and occasionally I'll come in with the sandpaper and if there's any nick or scratch in the wood the sandpaper will fill those nicks and scratches in with sawdust and that will let me know I need to file right there a little bit more and I can I can detail that in and clean it out and it feels so good in the hand because you get that, that natural texture that comes out with the, the file and the rasp it is a it's, it's a really personal thing and uh, yeah give it a try sometime and see how it feels so now that we have it shaped we need to do some of the more detail because I made it larger than it needs to be taller we need to cut the top and bottom off to get it to the right size I first want to figure out exactly where I want the screw to go through the handle so we're gonna lay that out top and bottom and then come in and mark out exactly where we want it to be but first let's let's test it if ever you're drilling a hole for something test it make sure that it's the right size because I need to create a slightly larger hole for the head of the bolt to go into and then a smaller hole for the shaft bit to go all the way through so we're gonna cut that slightly larger hole first and create a little recess for the head of the bolt to, uh, to sit in and then we can come in with the quarter inch bit and bore this through and this is where I want it to be perfectly level I have it clamped in the vise level with that line and then I can put the ring on there and check it and a lot of people are gonna say well why didn't you drill it before doing all this work well the problem with that is when you're using hand tools it doesn't matter if you drill it before during or after you're still gonna have to do the same method to drill I like to do it after all the shaping because then it makes it much easier to see exactly where the hole needs to be. And if you drill from one side and then drill from the other, the two meet in the end or in the middle, and it's it's very very easy to do. This is something that is uh, it surprises most people just how easy it is to drill this hole through the whole thing. Now, if you have a drill press, it's easier to keep it as a square and keep the hole that you want to drill squared to one of the outside faces, so you can run it down with a drill press. But if you don't have a drill press on hand and you're just going to do it by hand, then just eyeball it. It's really really simple to do next thing I want to do is create a groove on the bottom that fits into the plane and so you saw earlier I had the saw and I cut that down to depth and that is my stop line that I'm going to cut down to and then I'm going to come in with files starting with a V tool getting down close to that depth then widening out the V cut with a gouge and this gouge is a slightly smaller circumference than what I need but this will allow me to get it close check it go back adjust it again get close check it and I can always widen it out uh, with the gouge and just work on the sides of it and then come in with a file, clean it out, and do our final tests. And there we go. We now have it fitting to the plane. Just need to do some work on the top of it now because it is too tall. There is the, the bolt length. Um, can't make it all the way through the tote and then into the nut underneath. And so we can chop it off now that we know exactly the length it needs to be for the bolt that we have. Now we can re-drill out the top large hole and put it together, test it out, and make sure that everything is functioning. And in this case, it is happiness. <laughs> now we just have to do a lot of the little detail work on it. Uh, I need to work on the, the toe. As you can see, it's sticking out farther on the front. And so I'm just going to cut it off and then file it down quickly. Come in and do the last little detail. Again, rasp, file, finer file, and really fine file. And you get that nice, clean, rounded edge all the way across there. And we can do our detailing work. Uh, clean up the top from the saw marks on that and then all the little edges break them just a little bit give you that nice clean feeling and it's amazing the the, the the sharp feeling you can get from a file that sandpaper just ruins 
Speaking of sandpaper, we're going to come in and do a little bit of detailing here. I'm not actually going to sand it with this. I'm just going to, well, I'm going to sand it, but this then lets me see where do I still need to work. Are there any scratches that I was missing because any of the, the, the sanding dust will then uh, fill into these pores and uh, I can come back and clean those up with a file. And the sanding lets me know where I need to file more. And now that we have it all cleaned up and ready to go, we can give it its final test, make sure that everything's in there, feel it in the hand, make sure that everything is, is running smoothly and feels good. And now it's time for boiled linseed oil. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Especially with the zebra wood. Oh my word, does this look good. Uh, yeah, the, the zebra wood just pops with this. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm using boiled linseed oil to add color to the wood. Well, it doesn't really add much color. It just brings out the natural tones that in the wood. And uh, this, it, it's, it's something that I like. It, it's a far more natural color than most other things. Let that sit, let it dry. And then after it has been sitting for a while, it's dry to the touch. Then I'm going to come in with shellac. This is a two pound cut of clear shellac. Do two coats of that, let it dry, then sand two coats, let it dry, then sand. And then I'm going to do a final coat of shellac, really nice and thin, so it seals everything in. And then we can come in and buff it off. Uh, so it's the five coats and sanding in between two and three, and then sanding in between four and five. And uh, it just it builds up a little bit, gives it some protection, and still feels decent in the hand. Then the last thing is after it all dries, then we're going to put on some paste wax, buff that in, wait for the wax to dry, and then buff off the paste wax and really make it shiny. And that is, uh, it's not like overly glassy shiny, and it just looks, looks good, feels good, make sure everything's just right, and I'm really, really happy with how this came out. It is a fun plane, and I'm glad I had the chance to work on it. Hee, <laughs> happy. I love zebra wood. So there you have it. Now, this was a lot of fun. I do not own this plane. This is something that was sent to me by a friend of the channel, and so I'm gonna be doing a couple videos on actually using this. And so he's sending it to me so I can make videos, and then I'm also making the knob and tote for him. Uh, so I'm gonna be sending it back to him in a little while. Now, he didn't have the screw that went through the handle, and I thought I had one that would work, but I didn't quite have one in stock. Um, but thankfully, I was able to find one. So if you're ever looking for parts, go to handtoolfinder.com. It's a website that I had set up with a whole list of parts and sellers and tool sellers and a whole long list of online tool sellers. So I went down through the list and I said, hey, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? So I was able to find the screw from Bob Caney. He uh, had one in stock, which is like, wow, because those are really, really rare to find the screw for a 10 and a quarter. So I am overjoyed to be able to get that. And he sent it to me for like eight bucks, a phenomenal price. And so if you're ever looking for parts, that's the place you want to go. Now, these are made out of zebra wood. This is not the original wood for it, but we really liked how it came out. And this is what he had in stock. And I just like the way that looks. It's really sharp. And we are keeping the original knob. He doesn't have the original tote. Um, so if we ever want to switch that back on, we can. But for right now, this just looks really good. So I'll probably be doing a couple of videos here soon about using this and what specifics about it, especially with the 12 and a quarter with the swiveling handle. Uh, it is a beautiful tool. So if you want to see the simple video where I just go through and have some fun making this, you can go over to the main channel. Um, but we're soon going to be moving all of the talking videos over here. So if you like that, then stay here. Also, if you like the video, please let me know down below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all those fun things. They really do help out the channel, and thank you for that. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Thank you. So I think that's about it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Okay. Book time. Let us look into this one. A magician was driving down the street, and then he turned into a driveway.